All right, what's up, guys? We are back with another podcast episode, and this week it was actually a really slow news week. There wasn't much that happened until literally the day that we're recording this podcast, which is Sunday. Uh, we're going to be recapping the Pickleball Slam event that had John McEnroe, Andy Roddick, uh, Michael Chang, and Will, why am I blanking on the third guy? Who'd you say? McEnroe? And, oh, Andre Agassi. Andre Agassi, yeah. I just completely blanked on who I had even said there. Yes. We're going we're gonna to recap that, talk a little bit about the upcoming U.S. Open trip, and then just a little bit about some gear, the favorite paddles that Will and I are using, as well as some balls, because a lot of you have been asking us questions about those. So we're just going to chat about that a little bit. But before we get into that, we have a comment to read. I thought this one was absolutely hilarious. If you guys listened to last week's episode... I was talking about this energy shot that Zane got me to start drinking called More Than Energy, and I was trying to describe the effects of how it makes me feel. And I said, I can now hear color and see sound whenever I drink this, and I'm also colorblind. And this Anton commented, love that Chris overcame his colorblindness and can now hear color. And he guessed... 191 paddles is how many I have. If you guys listened to last week, you know I said whoever guesses correctly will win a free 3.5 at best shirt. And unfortunately for Anton, he was too off from guessing correctly. Ooh. The correct answer was 193 paddles. And the person who got that comment correctly was Sven Jorgensen Jorgensen. So leave a comment down below with your email and I will get everything all set up uh, just to you know verify it's you, get your address and all that, and we'll go from there. But, Will, there were a lot of comments about how many paddles I had, and some of the comments, were, <laughs> I, did you get to see any of them? No, I I, I didn't. I, I didn't want to go to your comment page and just look at like all the guesses. I guessed, what did I guess, like 120-something? I was, I was way off. Yeah, you guessed fairly low, but there was quite a few people who guessed like 60, 70, someone I think guessed over 300. And I was like, oh, wow. I mean, I, to be honest, that wouldn't shock me. I think if I accepted every paddle that was offered, it might be. But yeah, 300, that'd be a lot. I personally thought for sure I was over 200. Mm, I mean, you were close. I didn't even come close to you. I counted mine and I think I have, I think I got 77. That's still a lot of paddles, Will. We have problems. No, we do. We do. <laughs> we definitely do. All right. So, yeah, leave a comment and I'll, I'll get you set up with a shirt. Uh, thank you to everyone who participated in that. But, Will, we've got a review to read. Yes. All right. So this is from Apple Podcasts. The title is Take, Takes One to Know One by Satirist76. And it reads, Chris is surely 3.5 at best, but the same could be said for me. I found these guys searching for more pickleball content, and I love the show. I've tried a few other pods, and there are some six-something big-name pros with podcasts, but they're 3.5 content creators at best. Will and Chris are funny. Well, mostly Will. <laughs> they're also <laughs> informative and on top of the going on in the Pickleverse. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you for the review. We much appreciate it. I don't know if I agree with the comment about Will being funnier than me, but, you know, we'll, we'll let it slide this time. We'll let it slide. <laughs> appreciate Anyways, it. Anyways, moving on to the news and updates, Will, what do we got? Oh, yeah. So uh, the APP just uh, put out some information, and I think the dink turned it into a blog. And I'm just going to read a quick little excerpt from it. And it says that more than 70% of avid pickleball players, those who play at least once per month, are between the ages of 18 and 44. 40% are between 25 and 34. And 18% are between 18 and 24, says the APP. I'm actually not too sure where they got these numbers do you happen to know what the sources are? I don't know exactly where they got their numbers from. I probably should have went through and grabbed that. But I will say in my area, I have definitely noticed the average age dropping significantly since I started playing pickleball. Even just the last few times I've gone to Lifetime, I've noticed families playing with their kids ranging anywhere from maybe seven up to 16. And then there's just a lot of younger adults you know, probably even a little younger than me, maybe early 20s or around my age, mid 20s. And when I started, the park I was going to was basically 
no one my age. It was me and my brothers, and that was it. Uh, yeah, I, I've been seeing that too. I mean, just pickleball in general, just growing rapidly. And, but also, I've experienced like new pockets of areas in my town. Like, I, I haven't really gone to some of like the indoor gyms or rec centers or even churches to see where people play. And there was a little mini tournament at my friend's church, and she coaches some of the players there. So, uh, we played in the morning. And then she's like, hey, you should come and check this out. And uh, there was quite a bit of people. I mean, they only had like three courts going, but it was packed. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised and just a lot of new faces that I haven't seen before. So, I mean, love to see it. I'm really curious to see what this summer is going to look like because uh, the, there was a lot of new faces after my first year of pickleball when we came back from winter into summer. And I feel like this year it's just going to be even, way more so going to the public parks i'm used to playing at very curious to see what the demographic is going to look like in the evenings <laughs> if you can even find courts I, yeah if even that i actually might end up keeping my lifetime membership because i know a lot of people are going to stop paying for theirs or it's just going to be less appealing to go because you have outdoor courts you could go play at and being able to just reserve a court and essentially hold it for a ton of hours during the day would be pretty nice. So mm -hmm. we'll we'll see. But that's definitely something in the back of my mind because in the past, I've been very used to... Uh, I, I'm fine rotating in an open play, or at least I have been. Last year, I would kind of show up with a group and we would rotate amongst our group, you know, play a game, get off, go back in the paddle rack with each other. Yeah. But now that I'm focusing on reviewing paddles so much, that extra time off the court actually makes it much harder and having to set up a camera at the public courts and just take up a walkway it's just a lot of extra steps so i don't know i'm very curious to see how it pans out <laughs> i mean for you what are you actually going to do because do you have that many there's not that many outdoor courts in tulsa uh, right no there are not uh they are building some more i just don't know when they're going to be completed by but um there are some like facility projects that uh, me, my buddy James, and a few other people are working on here in the city. And if things go our way, uh, we should be operational by mid or end of the summer. So I'm really stoked about that. It'd be a at least a 12 court facility indoors with potential like three to four more courts outdoors. And I don't know, I'm really stoked about that but pickleball is growing and i know there's multiple kind of projects kind of going on at least murmurs and whatnot but i still feel like we need a a large area with a substantial amount of course where people can kind of just congregate and you know really experience the great social aspect of pickleball so yeah yeah i think there's a there's a big we have a you know a lot of different courts that have opened up in the last year in minnesota and some of them are more or less ideal depending on what you want to do. The one of my favorite ones that we go to all the time has, I mean, it's the one you've been to. It's got that middle walkway. It's easy to watch everyone. It's easy mm -hmm. to hang out and talk. There's places to sit. And then there's other ones where it's a little less known, or at least last year it was, and not many people went to it. But when it's full, there's literally no place to sit except basically on grass. If you saw it, it's highly unideal to hang around. So, I don't know. I'm curious to see how they keep building courts because I think there are some where it's very nice. Even when you're not playing, you can socialize mm -hmm. and talk very easily. And some of them, you just really can't do that. Yeah, no, agreed. I think if you're building a court out there, if you're a city, you really have to think about kind of that open area where you can kind of just sit and chat and to make that also an enjoyable experience. Um, and then yep. also moving through the courts. No, I hate like going to a court where you have to you know, <laughs> sneak past a couple courts or, or whatnot. Yep. And, uh, but I mean, not a huge deal. I know there's some courts where there's systems where, you know, you kind of move the court down once it opens up. Like if you're already yeah. playing, you move down and it just makes things a little bit easier. So I don't know, play is not interrupted. Yeah, no, definitely. Anyways, well, let's move on to our primary topic, which was the pickleball slam event. If you guys didn't get the chance to watch this, this was a charity event with John McEnroe, Michael Chang, Andre Agassi, and Andy Roddick. If you don't know who any of those are, they're all 
former tennis legends of the yes. game of varying <laughs> ages. Uh, anywhere between, I think Andy Roddick is about 40 all the way up to 64 for John McEnroe, I believe. So you had some decade <laughs> gaps there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it was fun. in athleticism. Yeah. I mean, tell, tell me what you thought about the whole thing. Um, yeah, no, I thought it was great to see I, I, John McEnroe. I was really excited to see, you know, Johnny Mac on the court. Just he's the most animated, you know, yeah. he's really a, a personality on the court. And yeah, he didn't disappoint, at least on the pickleball court. I thought it was really cool to see. But also, uh, I don't know. I think a lot of people out there still think that he hates pickleball. Do you agree with that? I know he made some comments before. I don't know if he said he hates it, but like, I don't know if he likes it, but. I don't, it's hard to say. I would definitely like to think his tune will have changed because watching it, he definitely seemed to be enjoying himself and he was getting pretty competitive when he would win points. He was into it. Yeah, he was definitely into it. I mean, yeah, I mean all of them, they're, they're all competitors, you know? And of course, like they were enjoying it, I guess they're, I mean, they, let's be real. They're, they're getting paid to play in it. Right. So if you're going yeah. to play with it, might as well make the most of it. Right. For sure. I mean, I, you know, I'm sure they were, you know, I'm sure with, uh, John McEnroe, he, you know, probably animated a little bit more to to play some stuff up or whatever but i just think watching them on the court they all loved it i mean even andre agassi at the the post game interview after the doubles match he said i will be playing this game as long as i'm able to walk and he did also say pickleball is the place where tennis players go to die but and people have been debating <laughs> Was he trying to be mean? Is it a bad thing? Personally, I think it was just a lighthearted comment. It was probably more so about himself than anything. I just took it as a joke. But him saying, I will be playing this as long as I can walk, that's a pretty big praise from a a big former tennis player about this game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what did you think of uh, their play? Like when you saw them playing singles and then doubles? Singles for John McEnroe and... Who did he play against? Was uh, he, it Andre? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it was. The singles play was not <laughs> good to watch. <laughs> I I would like to think I could beat both of them pretty handedly. I don't know. Watching their lateral movement, it was just really bad. And I think if you just dropped them and closed the net, I don't think they would have. I mean, just watching them. They didn't really know what to do uh, several times. I was like, holy cow, you guys used to play tennis? I'm like, your lateral movement is really bad. Now, granted, Johnny's yeah, 64. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. up there. But doubles was way better. Doubles, I thought, was very entertaining to watch. There was some good banter on the court. Their hands, of course, are all awesome. You wouldn't expect any less from tennis players. Obviously, the soft game was non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that bad. They, they got into a few little dink rallies i bet you could count on one hand how many times the ball was dinked more than four times in one point <laughs> i'd be curious now, it, did you actually do that you should do that somebody, i didn't somebody, do that somebody, but somebody i had to go back and tell us in the comments like how many times they they dinked <laughs> they it was here's how i would say it. so people online have been trying to assess yeah how good were they or what you know are they three fives are they four o's are they four fives oh come on and i think wait what would what, you think I think it's a blend of a lot of things. So here's how I personally view it. Their hands, 4.5 plus easily. Their hands, amazing. Their dinking, 3.5 at best for sure. Their <laughs> dinking was atrocious. They did not know how to dink. Uh, drives, obviously great. Drops were okay. They were they were decent at it, but not amazing. Near Their the drops end, Johnny Mac were, was getting it. I thought, I was like, oh man, Mr. Mac and Roe. He's he he got some few a few good drops or a little like hybrid, you know, kind of yeah. Uh, he did kind of have some drops. hybrids. His technique was a little bizarre. He kind of he would like flick his wrist instead of you know. Obviously, he probably hasn't played a ton, but you know, we're used to kind of using your whole arm. He just like slap it with his wrist. I mean, he probably has that control, but I thought they were at, like at least four or five. Ah man. Okay, no, you tell me. Tell tell me. You put them, you put them against your like your normal 4-0 players. Are they winning? 
I think so. I, I think they hang. Okay, let's be specific about which players. I think if you took Roddick and Agassi, I think they could beat 4-0 players. The problem is if you get them into any prolonged dinking, I think they're going to be in trouble. But if you start any hands with them, the 4-0 is losing without a doubt in my mind. Hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think they were instantly 4-5. Yeah, I I think if you basically gave them a week and played consistently, they'd probably all be four fives consistently. I think there was just elements about the game strategy wise. Uh, like I kept laughing that Andy Roddick would just dink the ball straight ahead to John, and they'd both go back and forth straight at each other. And I'm like, one of you needs to Ernie this ball. It's not yeah, going to be for it. <laughs> yeah, I thought Andy Roddick was just going to come and slap the thing, but no, he never he never did. So I think if they played. For a week, probably four fives without a doubt. Right now, I think if they went to a 4-0 golden qualifier or something, I wouldn't be confident that they would win, but I think they could go fairly deep. Their dinking was just a big liability. I wouldn't be surprised if they won it. or if, I mean, if they went deep, but if they won it, I don't think I'd be surprised. That's I mean, I, if they did win, I wouldn't be surprised, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't bet on it if I had to. Gotcha. Pick them winning. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But yeah Fair enough. Fair I, I don't enough. know. I thought their the level was great. I, there have been people calling them three fives. I'm like, oh, there's man. no way. There's, there's no, no way. way. <laughs> if y'all thinking they're three fives, you're out of your mind. <laughs> like, there's just yeah. absolutely no way. The, if you look at the form on a lot of those shots, I look back at clips of me when I was a three five. So, I mean, we're probably talking about yesterday, but <laughs> <You> <laughs> the form not was me. not. The, the the form was not there back then, man. And even just now when I show up and I see some, you know, like a 3.5 open play, the hands at is not the same at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a fun <laughs> event, though. I mean, it wasn't the best pickleball, but it was very entertaining. Would you watch it again? Or would you? Is there any other uh, tennis players that you would like, I guess, to watch? I'd love to see Serena like play. Yeah. I, I mean, well, okay, if I, if I could have it, maybe the, the, I'll tell you what my dream team doubles would be. Okay. I don't know who would be with who. Actually, maybe I already do. The four would be Federer, Nadal, Carlos, and Djokovic. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's that a would, good one. I think that would be legendary. It will probably never happen ever, but it would be incredible. I would watch that for sure. Oh, really? I want to see uh the brian brothers and i want to see nick curios mm. and oh, jack yes. sock those are the four those are oh, my four we've already watch. seen jack sock though. i mean we've already seen but like them all four of them like in a game together you know sure sure that's what i'd like i to do see. think that would be entertaining i like that that idea yeah. but the, the whole event though so we've had different celebrity events in the past of varying levels of play there's been some at the ppa the level was eh, not amazing and then we also had that pickled event on national television, which was pretty much a joke. I think this is the best celebrity event we've had in terms of possibly play. Obviously, the people that were in it, huge names. Production value was amazing. In- instant replays. Yes. A very good replay. The stadium was sick. I think that's what I hope pickleball or Major League Pickleball finals look like in the future you have the crowd is a little more dimly lit center court is lit up and it's just you've got everyone surrounded it it looks sick yeah no i really liked it too it was very dramatic and i think i would have liked to see the colors on the court inversed because i think like most of the court was light and then the kitchen was dark but i might have wanted to see that reverse but other than that I, i i really liked it uh and I don't know. It seemed maybe it was just on TV, the exposure. That, that's why I wanted to be darker on the rest of the court because the light part of the court, it was kind of hard to see the ball at times. But yeah, other than that, no, I thought it was great. And the instant replays, I was like, oh man, why can't we have this on the regular stream? This was like, oh, it was really so nice. fast and it just had a quick pop up. Like it was, I mean, obviously it was a, a national, very well done live broadcast. Yeah. You wouldn't Some expect ESPN. any less. Yeah, I mean, it was going to be good, but man, it just, it really makes you know what we could have for pickleball. Go I ahead. really liked 
the bird's eye view, like the straight top down. Like, yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, I was I was kind of neutral on it. It was just I think it was good for seeing certain things, especially foot faults. Actually, I, <laughs> dude, the, they got called on so many <laughs> Faults, especially John McEnroe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he looks so he looks so defeated every time he got he got called for a foot fault. So I can't funny. remember. They were mic'd up. Not all were they, they were. all mic'd no, up. No, they all were. Oh, yeah. they were. Okay. Yeah, but the issue was they had the ref, the commentators, and the players. So sometimes there was a lot of overlapping voices, and it. The player voices were quieter than the commentator. Mm. Uh, also, the audience. Granted, there was probably a lot of non-pickleball players in there, if I had to guess. Well, th- maybe there was. I think you'd be excited I- either way watching them engage in a hands battle. But the way the atmosphere of the audience was is also how I would like to see pickleball. You know, at, as a point is uh, getting ready to go. You know, they're getting ready for a serve. You have some people shouting a couple random things i don't know what they were shouting hopefully it wasn't anything bad um you know the players engaged with the audience a little bit obviously that's kind of for show but just the way the level of enthusiasm for the audience was was great it's just not the same as a regular ppa where it's much more kind of like golf yeah i'm a little bit more muted yeah so i don't know huge huge fan of the event i thought they knocked it out of the park i think if you and i were to go play uh, against Roddick and Agassi, I think I think you and I would beat them. I think so too. <laughs> My hands would be a liability, but we just don't we don't speed it up. We don't speed we dink, it up. We win. Yes, I mean that's that's <laughs> them at their level now. We can't give them any time to train. Yes, can't definitely give them any definitely can't. <laughs> but the last thing I want to just go over really quick is uh, just a kind of our thoughts on is this good for pickleball mm-hmm. because with the last one uh with the pickled event people were kind of like ah oh, this makes pickleball look stupid i think this one was perfect the amount of people that will be exposed to this game especially tennis players because of seeing you know these tennis legends play i think we'll do amazing things for it. the the amount of exposure we just got was probably through the roof no it was definitely through the roof i just want to know how the tennis purists feel they were hating on them or, or not you know or they're just... i would love to know that too yeah i dude you know what after this we should go on like uh reddit r slash tennis or something yeah. and just see if they're talking about it yeah i want to see maybe they hate it maybe they don't are they hating on <laughs> on McEnroe or erotic or you know they're giving them any shade because like they went to the dark side or whatnot so i'd be very curious to see uh what they said oh last thing actually <laughs> Because I was telling I was telling Sarah about this when I was watching. So McEnroe was for sure getting targeted in doubles. You could tell he was probably the weakest one in there. A lot of volleys into the net and, you know, just a, a few foot things here and there. And... <laughs> yeah, football. But what made me laugh is I can't remember his exact quote, but I I'm going to paraphrase. This is just how I remember it. I don't know this for sure. But I thought he he was making fun of pickleball in an interview. And I thought I remember him saying stuff like, it's so easy. It's like for old people, you know, all the stereotypical stuff. And after just watching him like hands into the net footfall, I wanted to just cut a montage of him speaking in the background and then him just <laughs> faulting shots into the net over <laughs> and over. <laughs> I thought it would have been so funny, but I wasn't going to go through the effort to make it. Oh, dang, you should have made it. That would have been amazing. It- it would have been pretty amazing, I think. But yeah. <laughs> all right, we can move on to our uh, secondary topic, paddle of choice. And uh, we're going to get to the balls in a second, but we'll start with the paddle of choice lately. Uh, what you got, you can go. No, you can go first. All right. For me, <laughs> it is the 60 double black diamond 16 millimeter. I did just go out and do two sessions with the 14 millimeter double black diamond and the black diamond. Both of those are rock solid as well. I I could go to a tournament for sure with the 14 millimeter. The black diamond, I would need some more adjusting. But that 16 and 14, I love them. It is a great paddle for me right now. Uh, the main reasons I like it is I still have enough room for two-handed for a two-handed backhand, even though the paddle is advertised as a 5.3 inch handle. So that's good. But because of the shorter handle and slightly more compact shape, my hand speed is better. The swing weight is a a tiny bit lower than the elongated paddles. Power is obviously great. It's thermoformed, spin, 
is amazing. I just think the hands and the extra control I have with the paddle not being as long is very nice. I like that a lot. I'm actually thinking a 5.5 inch handle might not be as ideal as I used to think for me in doubles. If every company could do this uh, 5.3 inch handle where the neck tapers nicely. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, I'm in a dilemma, man. All these paddles are, are too good. They're all so good. I don't even know. Well, <laughs> we should go back and figure out what episode you first said I'm in a paddle dilemma because <laughs> it was a long time ago. It's it's never going to stop. Okay, well, I was playing a lot with the Legacy, but I can't play with that anymore because mine delaminated and it's just like a rocket right now. What your Legacy did? Yeah, my Legacy delaminated. Oh, I actually don't know if I knew that. Yeah, it delaminated and then uh, Carbon 1X14 has been kind of the go-to but it all depends on how I feel and like how on point I am. And sometimes it's just, you know, it's unwieldy. And so right now it's, it's that the black diamond, six zero black diamond, the Ronbus R3 Pulsar, which recently just got approved that, that probably is the paddle I should probably play with. It's just overall, like just very good, very solid. And then uh, I've also been playing a lot with the uh, Bread and Butter Filth, which is essentially a clone of the Carbon One X Sixteen, and you know those are the main ones. I mean, obviously, like I hit with the Vadix here and there as well. But yeah, like all these battles are so good. <laughs> like, I mean, let's let's play a game, Will. Yeah, let's play a game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I'm gonna say whatever I'm about to say, and you have to answer as fast as possible. Okay. Okay. You I. I am going to, uh, how do I want to say this? Okay. You have, for the next six months, you have to pick one paddle to use. Which is it? You have three seconds. One. The Pulsar. Two. All right. There we go. Now, (laughs) why the Pulsar? It's just, I think it's just the best overall, like all around choice. And that's, that's really just what it is. like so what do you think is the biggest difference between it and the carbon 1x 16 millimeter because i haven't hit them side by side a ton but it reminds me a lot of the 16 it, it does remind 1X. me a lot well uh, honestly i haven't had the 1x 16 on me you know so i haven't been oh, able to donko with has it yeah because donko had it and i think he delaminated it because <laughs> he, oh did he <laughs> i think so i think he's been you know he's been playing a lot and it was his only paddle and you know donko like likes to smash the crap out of the ball so yeah um so yeah i don't have that one so it's pretty much the pulsar and it's just overall it doesn't hit as hard as the other ones but there's a little bit more utility feels a little bit softer and i think for me in my game i think i need a little bit more of that forgiveness and i think a close close second is probably the six zero black diamond those are like the two that I would probably. I'm go actually for. surprised it's the black diamond for you. Yeah, why is that? I would just think it's too much, too much pop, especially with you liking something that's a little softer, so you can kind of shape and place your shots a little better. I mean, that's got to be top three, maybe top four most powerful paddle in pickleball. Yeah, but it's less than the Carbon One X14, I think. Really? Yeah, I think it's. Uh. I, I think it's more controllable than the Carbon One X14. Huh. I don't. I for me, I don't think I. Huh. I'd have to hit them both. I just know that I very comfortably went to the PPA with the Carbon One X14, and the Six Zero would definitely take. I don't know some adjusting. They're they're very close. Like you could probably ask me tomorrow, and I've played with both of them, and I'll I'll put the Black Diamond ahead, or I'll put it sure. after. It's really it's really hard to get you know any real differences i'm literally splitting hairs trying to really think which one's more powerful and for everyone who has been you know wanting to know more about the the thermoforms in terms of reviews not all the drama or whatever it is really really hard to categorize all of these thermoformed battles because in all reality they are so similar 
but there are small things that make each of them unique and more or less ideal for someone else. Like Carbon 1X, if you need a long handle, that's the only one of the thermos that you can currently buy that you would choose. The Vatic and the 6.0 and the Legacy are all shorter handles. Um, the 6.0 and Vatics are great if you want a little bit more hand speed. The Legacy is the most powerful. Like each of them just have a small thing, but it's yeah, definitely small, and some of them get really hard to differentiate. Like when I go to finally do a comparison video, <laughs> it's going to be hairs. just... Yeah, it's literally splitting hairs. You're nitpicking the smallest of things. If you guys are looking to get one, they're all great. I yeah, it's it's hard to say any of them are bad for anything. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I'm glad we kind of know what you would pick for a pal. Okay, well, 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 just hold me to it because we're going to be going to the US Open soon. Just make sure I pack that in my bag. It, and then Oh no, I not only will it. I make sure you pack it i'm gonna make sure you use it because i'm gonna take away all your other paddles when you get there <laughs> okay okay fair enough fair enough <laughs> we we need you to stick with something until something comes out it, like maybe the perseus the person did you see that they uh teased it today it's coming soon no i didn't yeah they, they put up a, a teaser video i don't know how soon coming soon is probably not in time for the uh the u.s open but it would have been very funny and completely on brand for you if it came out before and be like, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'm going to go to the U.S. Open with this. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have more news for you guys about that soon. I'm going to I'm going to talk to talk to our guy here soon and yeah. see if we can maybe get that so we can have it ready for launch day. Mm -hmm. All right, but anyways, on. yeah. Next thing I want to talk about is just balls. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked us, uh, you know, what are the best balls in pickleball? You want a review or a comparison, and I want to do a video, guys, but there are so many balls on the market right now. You have outdoor balls, hybrid balls, indoor balls. Obviously, most people are focusing on the outdoor ones, but there are actually some really good hybrid balls as well. But here are the brands, and this isn't even all of them. I I didn't try to hunt them all down, mm -hmm. but you have Oso, Franklin, Core, Diadem, Selkirk, Pickle, Dura, A11N, Head, Gamma, and a bunch of others. So to compare all of those is very difficult. I have most of those balls now, and I've been trying to hit them here and there. But when you're reviewing paddles and changing paddles while you're using different balls, it, it really throws things off. And to be honest, I think that reviewing a ball is more difficult than reviewing a paddle. Yeah, I was going to say, hey, where do you even start? <laughs> yeah, I, there's just so many things to consider when reviewing a ball. There's the climate you're in. Are you in uh, a mild temperature? Are you cold? Is it hot? Obviously, a Franklin is a complete marshmallow uh, in Florida, which you and I are going to get to go experience. I haven't experienced a Florida Franklin yet, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. A Dura in cold weather is going to be an absolute missile, but it breaks all the time. And then there's, how does the ball hold its shape? And then it kind of depends on, well, how hard are the people hitting? What's the temperature you're playing in? Yeah. Are you playing indoors, outdoors? Exactly. You know, does it hold its color? Um, so it's really hard to do it properly. And I think if I'm going to do it as in-depth as I want, it's just going to take a lot of time. But I did just really quickly want to give, talk about some balls that I have tested I don't know how many of these you have hit, Will. So if you Some of them. have hit any. Yeah, so I'm yeah, excited to, to see and hear what you have to say about some of these balls. Yeah, so I'll start with the the Dura. Obviously, it's the ball, you know, tournament players want to use. It's the fastest ball. Pros love it. You know, points are a little shorter, but the ball just breaks all the time. I don't understand why it's randomly placed holes. I don't know why there's two different sized holes. There's the ball just outside of being fast. It's not a good ball. It breaks all the time. Your cost to buy all of those is going to be expensive. Bad bounces more than other balls with the Dura. Yes, and I I kind of feel like it has to do with the different sized holes. But all the time when I'm playing with people, I joke, assuming we're using a Dura, and the ball doesn't come up. It just dies on a serve or something. And I'm like, yep, that's the Dura bounce. Yeah, it just <laughs> did nothing. It's because it deforms. So, I mean, you you also get bad bounces with 
all all balls all balls he can give For you a sure. bad bounce yeah and i don't know i just if think it's the dirt i get it the most you, you think the dirt you get the most is it because you play yeah. with the dirt the most though that's that could be the thing as well i'm pretty in between pretty consistently between franklin and dura i would say it's 50 50 gotcha less bad yeah. bounce with the franklin i personally i don't see that bad of bounces with the franklin the only downside to me is that it eventually just softens up a bunch but they take longer to crack i don't feel like they go out around that often for me the what i will say is their quality control off the plant a lot of times the seam is like uh -huh. misaligned and you can feel that bump on the ball. That's not uncommon for me. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Uh, but closest one that I have personally found to a Dura right now has been the Oso Fury. People, this is another reason that I find it so hard to review a ball. People have such varying opinions. Some people think, no, this is like a Franklin. I don't think it's like a Franklin at all. I think it hits a little bit harder in my experience so far the ball has lasted longer, but other mm -hmm. people have had different opinions on that. But again, well, it's like, how do you compare it, right? If yeah. I'm in a 70 degree climate controlled indoor place and someone else is playing, choosing to play in 45 degree weather, of course the ball is going to break. But if you don't provide that context and you say it breaks, now people just go, oh, it breaks. I'm not going to buy it. You know what I mean? Agreed. And was it the Oso Fury that we had in Arizona? Because I remember we yeah. cracked so it, it was because we cracked so many duras. I was like, okay, I need to hit with something. I need to practice with something. And I just remember you had the one, the one Oso Fury, and that was yeah. <laughs> like old faithful that just lasted us. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. I personally, I think the ball is great. I would give it a try if you are interested in trying another ball. I'm not going to claim it's perfect. I don't think any ball is. No matter how good someone claims a ball is, I think they all have a, a flaw one way or another. But depending on who you are, that flaw may or may not bother you. To be honest, I think for 99%, maybe 95% of pickleball players, a Franklin is probably all you need, in my opinion. Yeah, last forever for most people. Yeah, it, it lasts a while. They're not horribly expensive. They somewhat frequently go on sale. Um, it's a good ball. So it's like Dura and Franklin are always going to be the standards because of tournaments. Then you can kind of branch outside of that. Uh, there's one ball I did try of heads that I think, I think it's live. It's, I think it's called the head, head pen pro ball. And it's interesting because the material is definitely thicker and it, when you touch it, it maybe reminds you a little bit of an indoor ball, but if you get over that, like your mind trying to tell you, hey, this is an indoor ball, and play with it. I think it actually plays pretty hard, and the ball feels like it would be extremely durable. I don't know that this is going to be the ball we all migrate to. Probably not. But I actually think the ball is pretty good. Um, so give that a shot, too, if you're if you're interested. All right. I'll have to, I'll have to check those, those out. Do you ever think that, because there's been some talks uh, or just ideas of you messing with the ball and you don't have to worry about paddle regulations. You know, you can mm -hmm. just the paddles go crazy and then you just make a super squishy soft ball. And that's the thing that you mess around with. Yeah. Like I think would, what do you think? How do you feel about that? I think it would be to me, it is the smartest and most obvious choice to regulate something that you have essentially full control over. You're the one at a tournament. You're the one supplying the ball. You know that you're bringing out a good or bad ball. You don't have to worry about controlling people's paddles anymore. Instead of trying to control all these manufacturers and new technology they make, well, go ahead and, and let them make that new technology. But if it gets out of hand, well, we're going to reel you back in. Thermoforming hits too hard. We're going to soften that ball up a little bit more. We just brought you right back down to earth. And you didn't have to wipe out a company because, you know, you're threatening a ban or on... Uh, you know, making customers unhappy because you just banned the paddle that they bought. I think it's, a, I think Zane is spot on with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd Seems be smart to, to me. See. We should, we should do, next time I see you, we should just play with all these different balls. And then also let's play with like some random stuff. Have you ever seen that uh, small uh, foam ball that they use or the red dot ball for a junior tennis? 
Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? We should try playing yeah. pickleball with with one of those. We should try that because I actually that might be kind of fun. Yeah, just to see. Like there, there was. It that, would be so quiet. Yeah, the this there was like a so there's a a decompressed ball. Is that the right word? Decompressed, like it's like the air is out. It's like a dead ball, like the red dot ball is like dead. But there's also one that's made just of it. It's really squishy. It's like foam, you know. And I've seen, yeah, I've seen some people they they practice in their house with that ball because it kind of it doesn't it doesn't bounce as high, just kind of like a pickle ball, but it just makes no noise. Well, like substantially less noise so you can actually hit it against your wall and i was like oh what if i played an actual pickleball game with that you know that'd be kind of interesting sure yeah i mean we should try that sometime i think it would be i think experimenting with the ball is a a good way to move however i have a feeling that franklin and onyx with the dura have enough pull with how much money they're probably pumping into these tournaments that it's unlikely that we're gonna get a ball change and upset people who are providing probably massive amounts of money into the pickleball scene. Yeah. I can see yeah. that. So other than that, I don't have too much more to say about balls. I've played with some core balls. They seem all right. They um, maybe remind me a little bit more of a Franklin. Uh, they might break a little, a little bit less. I haven't cracked one yet. Pickle, same thing, somewhere between a Franklin and a Dura. Haven't cracked one yet, but we're not talking about extensive amounts of games here. So all I'm going to say is there may be a ball comparison at some point, but I just want to make sure if I'm going to do it, <laughs> got to do it right. <laughs> yeah, man, good luck. I don't even know how you do that to get any real quantitative analysis or facts on the ball. Like, how would you test any of that? Like, how much of a, a ball bounces or whatnot? Are you going to, like, drop it from, I don't know, two stories high and see how high it bounces or... Yeah, I don't know, man. This is just one of those ones where I'm like, man, I don't want to be a numbers kind of data guy. I just want to go, yeah, this ball feels good. I recommend this one. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. it's just not it's just not my personality to do that. But the the project itself is very daunting to me trying to think of how to handle that especially because the, you know, y- you know it now. You're yeah. you've been doing it a whole lot more. The paddle reviews, they don't ever slow down. No they don't guys it's hard i don't know how you keep up with it all it's so much the, the questions that we get <laughs> yeah it's kind I, of crazy i don't keep up yes <laughs> all right well last topic we can get into is we have the u.s open coming in about two ish weeks. weeks we yep. leave which is pretty exciting first time for both of us right you haven't been i've never been nope yeah is there anything in particular you're looking forward to uh, i just want to see the venue enjoy the vibes and uh i guess i want to see the quality of play in florida i'm also kind of yeah excited because i know if this is not an app event or a ppa sponsored event so i don't know if any pros will be there they have pros going you just know ppa pros gotcha no ppa pros okay yeah. So, so Simone, Paris, Rob okay. Nunnery, Ryan DeHart. Like you have people like that going, but just not, you know, Zane, Ben, and them. Gotcha. Okay. Well, so it's kind of more or less a tournament for rec players and amateurs, I feel like. That's right. Like, would you say that's fair? Fair to say? That that's how it feels to me. I know it's a pretty large tournament. I don't know what the current registration is. Is that, but especially with the PPA pros being gone, I hope that the amateur experience is pretty good. Right, no, exactly. So that's what I'm kind of excited about to see how well the amateur experience is. And I'm kind of stoked to uh, see some of my old tennis buddies that uh, we used to teach tennis together back in Washington, D.C. area, and some of them moved down to Florida. I'm actually partnering with one of them, my buddy Nahom. Uh, We'll be playing 4 5. And uh, I want to see his his pickleball game. I'm just curious to see <laughs> if it's any good or do not. Do you think you guys? Do you think you'll win four or five? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna. <laughs> how I, how? Give me a percentage. How likely? When was last? Have you ever played pickleball with him? Never. Okay, that's gonna be an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean, regardless, I'm I'm just excited just to go have fun 
to be honest. So maybe I'll play loose, maybe we'll play good, but really I'm just stoked to just see him, see some other people. Um, I know uh, Drew from the Florida Smash minor league and a few of the Florida Smash people will probably be there. So I'm excited to see some of them again and really just have some fun. I'm not, yeah. I don't know, I'm not really going there to really be in the, I guess, competitive mindset. I'm not going there to like be like, oh yeah, I'm going to go here and win. You know, I'm just going here to enjoy my time and enjoy, I guess, the competition, if that makes sense. But yeah, so I am, I am definitely going to win, but you know what I, you know what I found out a few weeks ago? What? I feel so bad. (laughs) I'm just going to apologize now to anybody that's in my bracket because I thought me and my brother were signed up for four or five. It turns out we're signed up for four oh. So <laughs> I'm just gonna say now, anyone who's in that bracket, I did not want to be in this bracket. And I asked my brother, I was like, dude, how did we end up in four? I was like, I swear we signed up for four or five. Did they and just he, bump you he down? He jogged my memory. What's up? Did you, did they just bump you down? I thought I heard they do that. No. No. What happened was it was the stage where I was starting to feel in between a four oh and a four five. I was like, well, I think I could go either way and then after we had to sign up in january for the tournament and i think i just told my brothers like okay let's just do 4-0 it was beginning of january that's what we were signed up for the ppa and then i played 4-5 in arizona and i was like oh no this this feels totally fine like let's go ahead and just do this from now on and then you know i've been training a lot more and now i really feel like that's what we should be playing but it was oh, like so I you're was sandbagging. in between unintentionally sandbagging. Oh, Chris is a sandbagger, guys. <laughs> I would love to not be in this bracket. And who knows? Honestly, I mean, my goal is to go into this tournament and win. But I know how these tournaments go. There's probably another four or five in it. And they're probably better than me and my brother, to be honest. But I don't know. I definitely, I, my plan is to play well. I'm actually leading up to this tournament. I'm going to start trying to schedule some matches during the week with me and my brother and some people where it's like, we are here. We're going to play this like a tournament. Like you can, you can play timeouts two out of three. And then whoever wins that first two out of three, like that settles who won that after that, we can play a bunch of games. Maybe they're less serious, but I want games that feel like Mm -hmm. you have to be focused. It's not just, Oh, Hey, we're having fun. Like I want to play it like a tournament. Okay. So you're going to isolate people and like go for patterns and just for sure. Uh, you know, I have a tough time doing that. I will say, as of recently, I did play with a 5-0 group in Minnesota. There was eight of us. Whoa, you've moved up. You've moved up in the world. You got invited it was, to it a was actually really group? fun. I know, I know, right? Oh, I thought I was going to get snap. completely smoked. I will say I could tell I was definitely not the strongest one in that group, but there, I find if I play my role properly on the right side, we weren't necessarily stacking, but anytime I was on the right side, I was like, I am just going to play consistent, get my dinks back, get my, you know, just play properly and let my guy on the left clean up. I feel like I can play fine. There's definitely noticeable weaknesses, uh, things that I notice people are better than me at, but I was like, oh, this feels good as long as I play my role properly. Okay. All right. All right. Here, Chris the Sandbagger is going to win 4 0 <laughs> oh, at the no. US Open. He said it now, guys. Be ready. Um, gosh it's terrible i did there's not probably people here that listening gonna that's that's gonna play you i'd be so funny there's some there one of our listeners like meets you in bracket and then oh gosh when he beats you they'll tell us and then we have to talk about it on the pod we'll give him a shout out <laughs> i mean I'll, yeah the I mean, sandbag you, slayer <laughs> the sandbag slayer <laughs> but if it means one of two things and i don't know which it would mean then does that mean they were also sandbagging or that i'm just not good and then if i'm not good maybe that means i wasn't actually sandbagging okay true fair enough fair enough i don't know we'll see i i can't remember uh if since since me and my buddy nahum are playing four five but Mm -hmm. i i feel like there is a four five for 19 plus and like a four five for like 30 plus or 35 and over would you remember there was age there was another age division as well or if they're all jumbled Wait, up th- no there, there's always age divisions you know but that's what i'm saying what were the age divisions do you remember if it's 19 uh, plus and what was the next division up 
Well, so recently, I actually meant to mention, meant to say this on one of the previous podcasts, but recently the age brackets should be changed for all future tournaments. I think it's supposed to be 19 plus 30 plus 40 plus, and then 50 plus. So instead of 19 plus 35 plus, you're basically just going 10 year increments. My assumption is that since this tournament was announced before that change, it's probably 19 plus 35 plus. I just pulled up the email. It says, okay. for me, men's skill, age doubles, 4, 5, 30 plus. So I'll be playing oh, in they 4, did 5, 30 it. plus. Oh, nice. You yeah. are officially in... The Dirty I guess 30? I can't call it the, I know. The Dirty 30. <laughs> that's the Dirty 30. <laughs> the Dirty 30 Club. That's, that's a better way to say it. I was going to say the old person bracket, but then I realized, <laughs> you know, I'm really not that far from 30. <laughs> <laughs> I just... Here's the thing, Will. Yeah, I just still can't get over it. How much older you technically are than me, but most of the time I feel like I'm older than you. Yeah, no, it's it's probably true. I'm probably more immature than you. To be quite honest, you but are it's a like very a responsible seven year young gap. Man. No, eight year gap. It is because you're you're 35 this year. Yeah, I'll yeah, be 35 I'm, in April. I'm 27 this year. Wait, in when? April. <laughs> Wait, oh, we had during the U.S. Open, right? Yeah, well, it's that following weekend. So wherever there, let's say I, I get into uh, Florida uh, the 15th, right? I'm going to Boca and then me and my buddy now I'm going to drive over. But we're going to spend the weekend in Boca on the 15th. And then we go up until I think, I don't know, the 19th is when we leave. My birthday is that weekend. Do so you I'm, leave? Are you leaving on Sunday? No, I'm leaving on Friday because me and B, we have some plans for my birthday back here in Oklahoma. Okay. I might go okay, behind. so we're all at the same time. I might go to Kansas City, though. You want to come down to Kansas City? For what? <laughs> for my birthday. <laughs> you're, you're going to Kansas City for your birthday? Yeah, like we're spending a weekend there. Wait, why Kansas City? Because I wanted to go. <laughs> Wait, you just... You, Okay, hang on. Hey, you got to walk me through this. Why did yeah, you yeah, choose yeah. Kansas City for your it birthday? Was, no, it was just like we haven't been and it was just like I just want to do a little road trip somewhere. Like, you know, it's not that far. It's like a three hour to four hour drive. Huh. that I mean, that's almost tempting. The only, the only issue is that is literally after getting back from the U.S. Open. I know so that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would make it a little trickier, especially because Sarah just also makes Sarah, makes Sarah drive. No. Oh, yeah, try just have her drive again. <laughs> no, no, no. Bring, bring your bros. Bring Isaac. Isaac can drive. Actually, no. That's not a bad idea. Don't, don't let Isaac drive. We'll get there fast. We just might not get there safe. <laughs> you might not get there at all. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I might not get there at all. You never know. <laughs> okay, but okay, no, okay. man, that's that's fun. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do some stuff for your birthday in Florida. For anyone who's also going, Will and I, Will's gonna get there a little bit before me, but I'm gonna be monday to friday and then i believe will and i both compete on wednesday yeah we both compete on wednesday but i won't be at the u.s open until monday to be honest i'm gonna try i'm gonna spend that like that weekend before in boca and just chilling and maybe i'll play some rec games and stuff there and yeah yeah i mean you and you and your buddy will definitely need to get in some games make sure you know (laughs) yeah we're definitely what's up you don't want to go in blind Uh, i'm so glad i don't have to deal with that because one of two things Either I have Patrick or I have you. You and I haven't played together a ton, but I feel comfortable enough with you that we would figure it out. Yeah, we figured it out. Like, we're going to be playing at the Kansas City uh, Open, right? I, Kansas maybe City Open. Is that, is that the name of the that, tournament? Maybe. Yeah, maybe I, sooner than that. I don't know what the name of the tournament is, actually. But yeah, we'll definitely do that one if I don't get ditched last. If you ditch me for this one. No, I'm not ditching you. I'm a man of my good. word. <laughs> uh, we'll see <laughs> we'll see about that I, I do I really do think it would be a lot of fun to play together though I'll be yeah. curious to see because I'm obvious I think I'm more competitive well, no I know I'm more competitive than you, you definitely though. are so I'm curious to see how that works itself on the court in terms of what both of us want because I don't need Julian Arnold level yelling and you know i think if there's an amazing point and it's tight you know like uh yeah i might get a little louder but i'm not i'm not really screaming so i'm just curious to see how our energy especially if we were losing yeah what would we do to 
like get you know kind of bring the other one up or level out the mood or figure out what we're gonna do i think i'll i'll probably step it up and get serious if i see like you're getting serious and you really want to win like that is what drives me i hate i hate letting my my partner down especially if they really sure. you know want to win so i mean we, we won't know until it happens i don't know maybe i'll just be an idiot and i'll around and you'll be <laughs> mad at me for the rest of the week or weekend or whatever i definitely i definitely wouldn't get mad at you i don't think there's any context i would get mad at you unless it just seemed like you were throwing the game but i know oh. you well enough to know that you wouldn't be trying no, to no, throw no, the no, game no. heck no i would never ever throw the game intentionally only in wreck <laughs> <laughs> only in wreck just to set you up I'm like okay yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it gives us something know, to talk way, about afterwards that's what it is you know <laughs> wait for wreck or the tournament <laughs> for wreck i mean for the tournament too i guess you know yeah i mean it does make some of the wreck games more entertaining but yeah i don't know i think it would be sick if we if we qualified and got to go to nationals together i mean honestly I think it would be, I don't know if our time would allow, but it would be nice to go to multiple of them this year and actually try and qualify for the U.S. Open, or sorry, Nationals, yeah. because it's it's just relevant to, to our jobs. Yeah, no, we right? should definitely you know, go we, to another one, for sure. I think I think you, we should go to at least like two or three. Yeah, Easy. we should try I, and I plan those out. Yeah, we'll plan those out. We'll let you guys know. I think, I, I don't know, I, I really do think, I think we could do one especially here's the thing if you get on a podium at least this is how it worked last year i don't know if it'll work the same this year but you got in the lottery systems because that's how i got in for singles so we don't have to get first we just first is just ideal i think yeah. we could podium yeah especially we're, we'll just we'll have jordan coach us be all right yes yeah you know, before every yes. single tournament you know it'll be sick it'll be good stuff but all right, guys, that's pretty much all we've got for this week's news. Uh, we will catch you guys in the next episode. Make sure to give us a rating on Apple and Spotify. Leave us a review. And if it's funny or entertaining or just good in some way, we'll read it. we will read it on the podcast. And same with the comments. Uh, we've been reading them the last few episodes. Leave a comment down below with a comment or something, uh, a question or something funny, and we'll uh, check it out. But thanks for listening, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.